Uber had its strike today. Of course, here we are on, on uh, Valentine's Day. This will play into quite a bit of a big deal, I think, for Solana. So you guys don't want to miss it. It's going to be interesting. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right. Thanking our sponsor today, Tandem. You can do zero swap fees right now over on Changely by just getting your Tandem. And this is a great self-custody option for you if you are looking to get your coins and tokens off of exchanges. This is one of the options you can use. Jump over to Tandem.com. Hook that button right up there in the top right, and you can, of course, get into a three-card set or a two-card set. Get the three-card set. You'll thank me later. A great value. All you have to do, get that. They'll send it to you and use your app, all that good stuff. So make sure and use our link down below and start your journey on self-custody. Now, speaking of self-custody and what are the options of earning tokens, what are the concepts of what is happening around the Uber strike has a lot to do with crypto. I want to go to a few clips here. And play this first one, because this is talking about what the strike is and what it's about. Listen in. If we were spending the evening, the evening together, together tonight, yeah. I would indulge you with a with a meal, perhaps. Uber Eats, whatever it happens to be, and get you anything you want. Well, we could be in for a spot of trouble, I think. Not tonight. Not tonight, Josephine, I'll tell you that. No. Um, this morning, Americans looking to head out or order in on Valentine's Day may not be feeling the love. A coalition representing rideshare workers calling for massive strikes. One representative saying thousands of drivers nationwide could call out. It's the first major strike since Uber and Lyft went public five years ago. There could be chaos for those planning a Valentine's Day getaway, too, with organizers calling for rallies and for drivers to turn down airport trips in major cities across the country. Drivers planning to strike in 10 major cities, including Chicago, Philadelphia, Austin, and Miami. Uh, there are going to be thousands of drivers taking part in this across the nation. And they are the, the biggest complaint we have right now is pay and deactivation. Yeah, a rally is now underway here at the rideshare staging lot at O'Hare. Take a look behind me. Thousands of ride hailing and delivery drivers for Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash are participating. Now asking what this has to do with crypto, we'll kind of paint this out for you because it, it has a lot to do with the ecosystem around Solana. All right, so today Lyft had their earnings. Interesting, same day as the strike uh, happening, coincidence. And of course, the scenario of a coincidental accounting error that occurred. Listen to what they had to say about this. Jumped over 60% after hours. That was for a quick hot minute, an uptick in the rideshare's margin expansion. The release had uh, that number at 500 basis points, but on the earnings call, the company's CFO, uh, Aaron Brewer, corrected that number, said it wasn't 500, it was actually 50 basis points. The stock then pulled back its gains after the revision, but how that extra zero got on there? Yeah, I mean, look, it was a bad error, and, and that's on me. That's on me. But I don't want it to take an ounce of attention away from everyone at Lyft who busted their butts. All right, so interesting timing here for this, you know, obviously detracting from the news, but more importantly, the stock itself performing. And I'm kind of curious what Gensler thought about this, because in, you know, many people looked at this and saying, all right, is this market manip manipulation? Is there some other nefarious uh, actions going on here? Listen into what Gensler had to say. What is the SEC think about something like that? Is that something where you'd fine a company for that kind of mistake? Look, okay, I think it's a responsibility of companies to ensure that they put out information to the public that's accurate. Um, and I don't, I can't speak to that one matter. I don't even, uh, you're telling me something I learned about a half an hour ago. Um, but in general, companies are supposed to put out accurate information to the public. Those earnings, if you look at just a quick move on the chart right there, 67% up on that, uh, on that wick. Of course, the market adjusted and we're still setting at about 34, almost 35% up right now on the day for uh, what's happening with Lyft. Now, with all of this happening, you had the CEO of Lyft coming in and giving a little bit more a narrative on the strike itself. Listen in. I wanted to also ask you about what's happening today. There's going to be a, a bit of a uh, rider, or I shouldn't say a rider, but rather a driver strike that's going to take place. Uh, what can you say about that? What I can tell you is the big issues that drivers tell me, and I hear from drivers all the time, around tra <laughs> pay transparency, around uh, understanding what the cut is between what they get and what we get, around deactivations, 
These are issues that we've actually addressed really well. And so I think this, this strike, uh, which, as I say, has been in the works since you know prior to this, um, it highlights the same issues that we've known about. But I feel really good about how we've addressed them. And I'll be interested to hear you know driver's feedback, which so far has been incredibly positive about this. So positive with the drivers, but yet we're seeing this massive movement around drivers going on strike and all that happening. I think this is a factor that we'll continue to see, especially in the gig economy going forward. And there's some opportunities here, I think, for drivers, along with uh, kind of a narrative of understanding what's happening in Solana, especially around some of the technology that is starting to advance. All right, so we've talked about uh, Teleport before, decentralized ride sharing, essentially all driving on uh, Solana. Of course, we broke it down from their Teleport presentation a couple of years ago. And we, when you take a look at where they're going, I guess the question is, is why not faster? Because this is a perfect timing. I want to go to a clip by Teleport to kind of give you an idea of what's happening. Currently, that's Texas and Florida, so two of the three most populous states. So anywhere in those states, in theory, today, if there were drivers and riders, it would work. But obviously, there's not enough drivers, there's not enough riders. To have a good experience, you need this atomic network. So how do we get an atomic network? We're publishing the Strip Explorer. We're going to publish these unlocked values that we got from these agent-based models. We're saying when there's enough people online, when there's enough people in that jurisdiction, in that metropolitan area, that place unlocks. So the moment you are in a zone where there's enough drivers and the legally you know, ins- insured, licensed operator, the system turns on and you can call a ride. All right, so there's going to be some decentralized challenges that they have to go through to truly create um, a solution that could supplant what's happening in the ride-sharing economy. Now, remember, though, that the ride-sharing economy also has the delivery economy. The delivery economy is, I would say, maybe larger even because of the amount of revenue that Uber, Lyft, and others generate from that because of the percentage that they get from all these restaurants on the amount of uh, opportunity. Now, there's a handful of companies that are starting to address this. One that I, you know, full disclosure, I set on an advisory for is a, a small company called Devour. Now, Devour is going after this approach, which is basically an in-game ordering content uh, platform that enables what they call Devour Go, which is a, a beautiful app that really st- could start to open up some opportunities for drivers. And I think this is the thing that's kind of interesting. I was looking at their Twitter here. And there was a question right here. Is there a way we could drive for Devour? Is it food uh, ordering food only and restaurants work with other delivery services? So and they said, hey, we dispatched the final mile to delivery logistic providers, which is typical, uh, but stay tuned. Maybe some pr- future partnerships there. So the things that are happening there, I think, are very significant in the restaurant sector. When you get to the restaurant sector, I want to go to a clip that we did on another podcast that we do Uh, around this industry, because there's a lot happening in that sector around food delivery and the opportunities, especially as it pertains to crypto and also blockchain. This was an interview we did with the CEO of a company called Wowbow, which is a small chain that has expanded across the U.S. for what they call virtual kitchens and expanded their, you know, their footprint in a big way. So they're starting to utilize blockchain. Listen to what they had to say. We've done college campuses. I think we have four or five that are up and running right now. We've done sports stadiums, food trucks. Uh, We currently have 450 plus hot food vending machines around the country that serve our product. We've done over 700 virtual restaurants. We started 2023 with 350 grocery stores. We ended the year with about 5,000. And our goal is to 3X that this year in 24. Uh, the second obstacle is, is something we battle for 21 years now as a brand, and that is people still don't know what Bao is. As we continue to grow and scale our, our virtual restaurant segment, in 2022, we had the idea to create the first rewards program for a virtual brand. We looked at NFTs by having them get a digital collectible, and then we can offer those people additional rewards that are only good for those who decide to be part of what we were doing. It would elevate our whole loyalty program. So you've got like a digital avatar. I like that one. <laughs> These are some of the benefits. And you've got an experience, bow bucks, double points, and then you've got also merchandise that's coming in. Are you planning on adding more experiential components to this, we are looking. So I, I mentioned that we have these hot food vending machines out in the real world right now. We partner with somebody and they have our product inside the inside the machines. 
we want to put one in the metaverse. And while you're gaming, right, you mm-hmm. stumble upon one of our vending machines. Yeah. And when you're placing an order, it would actually go through wowbow.com. You never have to leave your game or your environment and then your food gets delivered to you and the doorbell will just ring and there's food. And we are working on these kind of ideas. Why go that route? I mean, we we had naysayers. We put self-ordering kiosks in our restaurant. Exactly. It, yeah. I mean, you've seen the cycles here. You've seen mobile ordering explode. You've seen social media explode in restaurant. You've taken advantages of all those technology shifts. Now you're taking advantage of this next one. And we have great partners in both Devour and in Flaunt uh, is who's powering our, our, our club at this time. What, what's difficult is, oh, people aren't adopting to it. People are telling me it's, it's not going to work. People are haters. I, re- <laughs> I remember a That's when you know you got something. This is going to be huge, Jeff. This is going to well, be think huge. About- all right, so this was an interview I did with Jeff Alexander, CEO over at Wow Wow. Reason I bring that up is because the restaurant industry is going to be a big catalyst, I think, of utilizing loyalty systems, brand IP, which we've already seen very successful around the industry, whether you look at Nike, what we're seeing with many brands now starting to move to the market and move to blockchain in a very big way. Restaurant, largest, one of the largest sectors out there, $4 trillion globally in sales. United States alone for uh, 1.2 trillion now, and the amount of growth opportunity is pretty big. Now they mentioned two. He mentioned two companies. Devour, of course, one, which I know I advise for, but also a company called Flaunt. Now Flaunt is tied into the bigger gaming ecosystem around potentially collectibles and NFTs. This is a video coming over from Flaunt, and it was basically just showing a little bit of how they're tying in to Roblox. And this is another thing that I think as we see more and more brands start to move in this direction, this is a perfect segue into connecting these ecosystems of gaming, retail, restaurant, all sorts of opportunities here, I think, in a very big way. All right, so let me jump to a clip real quick on Roblox talking a little bit more about their involvement with Flaunt. Listen in. When a user is in Nike land, for example, trying on a virtual Nike Air Max or Nike Air Force One, and they run faster, that is much more meaningful than just me watching a video ad of a a Nike shoe. And that level of engagement and that level of interactivity that a user can have with the brand is unmatched and unprecedented. All right, so what he was talking about there is this integration around IP in the future and what that might mean. And one of the, the projects that we've talked about here on the show before, all of which are tied into Solana, was Honeyland. And Honeyland has kind of done the same thing where they've got these power up elements that essentially as you're starting to play the game, you get that connection of really advancing more value to your character, your player, or your asset. All that makes sense because it starts to open up brand IP opportunities. And what we'll see in the next level of how retail will be connecting with customers. All right. So let me jump to this video that was on Devour's Twitter. This just kind of shows in-game ordering. There's going to be, I think there will be some advancements on this that will tie in the opportunity for leveling up, doing some things that will change your experience in the game that might give you points like DPay points, which is if you're going to do food ordering uh, in the metaverse, what we'll see around gaming ecosystems, all of that definitely going to be a, a big opportunity for food going forward. All right, so tying this back into the Uber drivers. This is another example of a great partnership that will apply to things that are very crypto native. This of course is mobile and pixel uh, jumping in, this Helium mobile. And what you get here is a full year of the mobile service. So that in itself is a great value in the sense that it one represents an opportunity for these drivers to jump into Helium mobile. Guess what? That writes on Solana. And you look at all of the different options they have, nationwide coverage, free hotspots, earn mobile tokens. This is going to be huge because it starts to open up that additional revenue center for all these people in Solana around hive mapping, which is we've talked about before on the show, of course, here with earning mobile tokens. There's a lot of, and there's going to be more coming. I think we're going to see more and more logistics and deep end projects that play into this into the future. If you think about the addressable market of what this looks like, Look at this. This is as of uh, February 2024, 3.5 million drivers worldwide. This is just Uber, okay? And 120 million active users at its peak. So let's say 3.5 million on this platform, and there's probably another 15 platforms out there across the globe 
many of which kind of interconnect, we could have somewhere in the range of about 5 million drivers. If we have 5 million drivers that have access to this kind of opportunity, what kind of user ecosystem could we start to see? And then you've got 120 million, just with Uber, of the riders that are probably going to have an opportunity in the future to do things like this in the ecosystem as well. So I think food ordering is going to start changing. We're going to see a lot of movement in the gig economy already starting to show signs here. So I'm watching the deep end projects and the blockchains that are enabling all of that. And of course, we're talking about Solana and of course, many of the deep end projects that we mentioned here on the show. We'll try to keep you guys up on all this. Make sure and subscribe to the channel right now. Like a few videos. It does help kind of get the algorithm going for others that are trying to learn about really what's happening in tech as it kind of shifts the world around us. Make sure and follow me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. Thank <laughs> you.